What's up, Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com, and we've got an office hours video where I answer your baseball questions here in my office. And in fact, we're going to go to the field today because the question I got from Nicholas Brainerd is, do you have any catcher stuff like drills or tips or anything? And yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I've got a YouTube channel with over a thousand videos now, I believe, and I was a former pitcher, but believe it or not, I've got some great catching content, catching videos, catching tips to be a better catcher on my channel because I have a bunch of major league catching friends and they've come on the channel and gave us some great catching tips. We've had Omir Santos, major league catcher, Will Nieves, major league catcher, uh, Ryan LaVarnway, major league catcher, and they've all shot a couple of videos on how to be a better catcher. So what I'm gonna do in this video is pull the best of the stuff that they came over, and this is over the uh, course of a few years, all of their best tips I'm gonna put into this video right here. So if you're a catcher and you're trying to be a better catcher, this is the video that you wanna see. Let's get into it, tip number one. So the first thing we wanted to cover today was a couple of drills that you can do at any age, whether you're a five-year-old just picking up the game or the things that I do in Major League Spring Training with these guys every day. And, and the first thing we want to talk about is receiving. Uh, when you talk about a catcher, it's really in the name of your position. you got to catch the ball. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you want to think about where do you want to catch the ball in your glove. You want to catch it in the pocket. But what we want to do to train that is to, to practice with the bare hand. This is a drill you can do at any age. All right. So you, you look at where the pocket is on your hand, you take off your glove, it's really right here in between these three fingers. So what we're going to do in this drill is we're going to take the glove off, we're going to throw it away for now, and we're going to work on bare hand drills, catching it with just these three fingers. And then what we like to do is we like to progress it. Once you get good at the basic drill, we take it up a notch, and we take it up a notch, and as you get bigger, stronger, you want to work on really strong hands so that you can catch the ball and make it look really good, and we're going to progress from there. Let's get started. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice catching it strong, but also soft. Now what does that mean? They sound like opposite topics, strong and soft, but they're really the same thing. What it has to come down to is your hand has to be strong and you have to not attack the ball. You're receiving it, all right? So Doug's gonna flip me these balls and we're gonna work on catching it with these three fingers only and you wanna catch it and have strong hands, but really you're not punching through the ball and you're not catching it like, the, like it's an egg you're not trying to break it. It's really just, once the ball hits your hand, how still can your hand be? You want it to hit your hand and all movement really just stops. One more. So when we talk about catching the ball strong, we also want to make it look good. All right, you've heard about framing before, right? I'm a big believer in less is more. So what you really want to do is, that ball you want it to be right in the middle of your body. Especially when you're young, but no matter what level you're at, even in the major leagues, umpires have a tendency to call strikes when it squares the catcher up in the chest. So you want to make that ball look like it really hits you right in the middle, no matter where the pitch is. So if it's a little bit off center, just bring it back towards the center. Just a little bit. Doesn't need to be a lot, and you want to be pretty subtle with it. Just a little bit. One more on the other side, Doug. Perfect. So then, depending on how old you are, if you have a little bit of a smaller hand, you want to, what you want to do is you want to take a golf ball, put it between your pinky finger, your ring finger, and your palm. And the reason we do this is because you really want to focus on catching the ball in the pocket. Just like you have the glove on, just like where you want to catch it, you're going to focus on the angle of your hand that it comes in on. This is the thing that kids do wrong most when they're doing this drill. You know, you focus on catching it the wrong way. So what this golf ball does is, especially for those of you that have smaller hands, it's going to allow you to make sure that the ball's coming in at the right angle and that you're still using the right part of your hand to catch the ball. So again, it's the same drill, now you're just restricting your fingers a little bit so you can only catch it with the right part of your hand. Still catch it strong and soft and bring it back towards the middle of your body. Good, one more. Perfect. Now the next progression from this, your hands get a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. Toss that golf ball aside put a regular ball in your hand, all right? Now this is gonna be harder for those of you that are a little bit younger, but this is a drill that we do in Major League Spring Training. It really is gonna make these fingers strong and it really focuses on how you're catching the ball. Again, the angle that the ball's coming in on. So you put this ball in between your pinky finger, your ring finger, and your palm again. Catch it strong, catch it soft. 
So when I talk about catching it strong, catching it soft, the things that you could be doing wrong in this drill are punching through it. This is what you don't want to do. See how I'm stabbing at the ball, guys? You don't want to stab at the ball. It looks too hard. That's where the soft part of receiving comes in. Soft, boom. All it does is it hits your hands and, and stops. Now when I talk about the strong part of your hands, you don't want to be too soft either. You don't want to catch it like you're catching an egg. You're not trying to make sure the ball doesn't break, guys. The ball's not fragile. Not trying to catch it too soft. Strong and soft at the same time. Boom. Once it hits your hand, the ball stops moving unless you're moving it towards the middle of the zone, making it look good, framing it with the umpire. All right? Now the final progression of this drill, guys, this is more advanced, it's a lot harder. If you can't do it, don't feel bad, but step it up a notch if you can. Doug's gonna throw me the ball. My hands are gonna be strong. I'm gonna be able to control that ball, manipulate it within my hand, shift it to my palm, all right? Flip the next ball, catch a second one. Then if you're really good, you can catch a third. Your hands gotta be real big and real strong to get this drill going. So catch it, soft, strong, shift it over. Catch the next one, here's the third one. Ah, oh, just missed that one. Guys, it's a hard drill, but again, get those hands strong, manipulate the baseball. You should be able to control these balls. One, catch it, shift it over. Two, three. All right, go out there and have fun with this one. You can do it at any age, and it's gonna work on hand strength, the angle that you're catching the ball, and a little bit of receiving in there too. A little bit of framing, I mean. What do you got for us today? Will, can you talk a little bit about framing receiving? What's a good way to do it? And then show us a few drills? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, John. Uh, you know, first of all, you know, I, I, I wanna talk about, about, you know, giving a nice target. Uh, uh, I know, I know, uh, you know, a lot of kids, you know, they, they haven't been teached, or, or, or just young people, they haven't been teached the right way to do it. Uh, they, they give a target, they give a target like this. So, what happened? If I, if I take off my glove, look how my finger are. So, right? Elbow is up, this finger is facing down. What happened? The older you get, the older you get, you start getting, you start getting sinker baller like John. Like when John used to pitch, you, got, you, got, you start getting sinkers. Now look, if I'm giving a target there and he throw me a sinker this way, look, if I want to catch it the right way, look what I had to do. I had to go all the way around, swap, and catch it like that. What happened? Either I'm going to be late, I'm not going to be able to frame it, or because he's throwing harder and he's moving that way, now I'm going to go like this, what's going to happen? You're going to break your thumb. Because you catch it like that, you're going to break your thumb, or if you don't, it's going to be a pass ball. So, if, if you're watching, you know, if you're watching, uh, you know, from the pitcher, if I give a target like this, you're not going to be able to see my, the pocket of the glove that much. So now, if I go like this, there. So, John, if give you a target like this, or I give a target like this, which one you can see better? Like this, or like that? The second. Second, right? So, second. I got it, I got it, so, so if I take off my glove, I want my hand, like I'm telling you to stop. Hey, stop, so I wanna see an L. I wanna see an L right there. So what happened now? If I'm there, now I can go from there, I can go right there. Look how easy it is. From there, I can go there. Instead of being like this, and, and going all the way around, I'm here, I go there. The toughest, the toughest, toughest pitch to catch is gonna be a fastball down, right here. Why? Because from there, you gotta go all the way, all the way like this. So every time I call a pitch, I was expecting that the pitch was, it was gonna be there. So in my mind, if the pitch was there, right away, I went like this. If it wasn't, piece of cake. It's a piece of cake right here. But if it was in my mind, I would go straight there. I would never go like this. Why? Because again, I would break my thumb or, I, or it can be a pass ball. So third drill that I wanna do, guys, uh, it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be ideally catching in the tip of your finger. So it's gonna be, first we're gonna do the index, then we're gonna do the, the middle, ring, and, uh, and then we're gonna do the pinky. Most important thing, if, if you wanna be able to do this the, uh, the right way and do it, and do it good, you cannot go and get it. If you go get it, it's gonna go, it's gonna go through your hands. You wanna be soft. Like you got chapstick, whap, whap. You wanna follow with your head and you wanna be soft. So you, you're here, so you wanna catch it right there. This. 
because this row, Jadier Molina, we all do it in the big leagues. Because when we, when, if I put my hand, right? If I put my hand, tip of my fingers are right there. So if I train myself to catch it on my palm, look where my palm is. I'm gonna be catching it right there. No, no, I wanna catch it on the tip of my fingers. That's right here, this is right here. So I wanna be soft. I'm gonna catch it on the tip of my fingers. Look at my tip of my finger, pop, right there. You know what's the tough one? The pinky? Pinky. Dang. <laughs> Bam, it is tough. Nice. One of the things I get questions about a lot is my player, my young player, especially my high school player, is real good at blocking in practice, but he has a really hard time taking it into the games. What's the biggest difference, and is there a drill that we can do to help him transition from blocking in practice to being able to block in the games? And my my answer is anticipation. All right, anticipation and balance. All right. So basically, any time that you call an off-speed pitch, curveball, changeup, splitter, slider, whatever you call, anything that's a non-fastball, you should anticipate that you're going to be able to block. And when I say anticipate, I mean you're not on your heels, you're not as low as you can possibly be. Be in your action stance, get your butt up a little bit, find that balance point where you can explode down the block if you if you have to as quick as possible, but you're also balanced enough to be able to sit back and catch that ball when you need to. All right, so what I want to do now is show you this catch block drill. You might have seen it before, but the importance of it cannot be understated. All right, your coach is going to mix it up. Either you're going to catch it or you're going to block it, and he's not going to tell you which one is coming in which order all right if you block it focus on getting down as quick as possible and if you catch it for this drill I don't want you going down to your knees and catching it all right stay in your squat find that balance point so that you can explode down when you have to to get to that block but that you're still balanced enough to catch these balls let's get it Read the ball, use your eyes, and anticipate. Find that balance point. Just like in the game, you don't know what, when it's going to come, when it's going to block, but you have to be able to block every pitch and then catch the ones that don't that don't bounce. All right, so Ryan, so what is, is there a mental trigger? Is there something that, that allows you to get better in the game at blocking? You really just have to have the mindset that anything that bounces, I'm going to throw my body in front of. This is one of the three main pillars of catching. Receiving, blocking, and throwing, all right? We have the three pillar power up. The video, click the link below if you want to check out the other things. But for blocking, you have to anticipate. You have to have the mindset that nothing's gonna get by me. I'm a wall, and the way to do that is by anticipating. Anytime there's a pitch that you call that might bounce, you have to be ready to block it. So how do you have to psych yourself up to, ke to, to block balls? Because um, I know that's not, um, it's not something that most people enjoy getting hit by baseballs. I mean, do you, like when you were younger maybe, did you have to psych yourself up to do it? Or how did you prepare to block baseballs? Yeah, guys, the easiest thing in the world to do is to just wave your glove at it and say, hey, I shouldn't have thrown it in the dirt. But that's not the mindset of a good catcher. A good catcher is going to be tough. He's going to be brave. You're going to overcome the human fear of things hitting you, all right? So you have to say, I'm blocking this ball. You have to make it a known fact in your mind that nothing is getting by me. If it bounces, I'm going to keep it in front no matter how I have to do it. You know, you want to get into perfect blocking form. We talk about that in the uh, Pro Baseball Insider course. Perfect blocking form. But if you have to throw, throw an arm at it, throw, throw a leg at it, throw your face at it, whatever you got to do, keep that ball in front. If you want to be a good catcher, you want to instill trust in your pitcher and your coach, you got to keep the ball in front. All right, so in a game, let's say you have to block 10 balls in a game. Yeah. How many balls? Balls hit your arms or hit something other than your chest protector? A lot of them. You know, it, sometimes it doesn't feel good, but it feels good knowing that you're, you earn the trust of your pitcher and, and you own, earn the trust of your coach and you help your team win by keeping that ball out in front. So if you get a little bruise, it's a battle scar. You know, maybe the chicks think it's cool, uh, but you're going to have some seams. But the most important thing is keeping the ball in front, giving your team the best chance to win. You see guys working hard and it makes you want to work harder, right? That's how as a catcher, that's how as a catcher you earn the respect of your teammates. You take that leadership role by working your butt off and earning the trust of not only your pitcher and your coaches, but all your teammates because you're the guy that when you're on 
on the field and everyone's watching the game. You're the only guy that everyone can see the whole time. So give it your give it your best. Anticipate and keep those balls in front. Really. Yeah. And I, I've seen I've talked to many pitchers who get scared when they're the runner at third base in a tight game and they don't trust their catcher to block the ball. Now all of a sudden they're throwing fastballs. They're throwing pitches that a hitter can hit. So if, if you if they, if the pitchers can have that confidence in the catcher with runners at third base, um, then it just makes them a lot more uh, a lot better on the mound. Guys, the catch block drill. All right, when you don't know what's coming, this is the best way to transition from practice and being able to take your good blocking in practice when you know it's going to come to in the game when you don't have any idea which balls are going to bounce. So this catch block drill is the best way to do that. Okay, first thing with the footwork is when you start when you set up. You want to be a little bit staggered with your right foot back. So if this would be even, straight with my toes here, I want to be a little bit staggered. So I'm going to have that right foot, I'm going to be dropped back just a tiny bit. Not too much to where I'm catching sideways, but just a little bit staggered. So I got this, I'm already opening my hips a little bit. The other thing is a lot of coaches say, you know, get up a little bit higher, get that butt up and everything. But when I hear that, when I see players trying to implement it, a lot of the times they get up too high and they're too big here. This is not a good stance. This is too high, it's not doesn't have power. So you want to be staggered and you want to be in a good comfortable position, not sitting down on your on your calves or your heels here, but up a little bit to where you're in a good spot to to really pounce up and you feel strong. Another thing is you don't want to set up too early. If you get the sign and your pitcher's standing there set and you're here like this, you know, these legs start to tighten up real quick. So don't get set too early. You can set up on your location here, and then as the pitcher starts to come, you're giving him his sign, and you're popping up, getting ready to go, okay? So don't set up too early. Now, as far as the throwdown goes, depending on where the guy is in the box, you have to be aware of where your plate is, because what you don't want to do is step on this plate, because if you step on this plate with metal spikes, or possibly even rubber spikes for you younger guys, Chances are you're going to slip out, fall, make a bad throw, maybe hurt yourself, okay? So you got to have plate awareness where you're at. You also don't want to be too far out when you're making your footwork because you'll get into that right-hand batter's box. And if there's a batter in there, that could cause some problems. So you want to keep your alignment going straight. Now, for the actual footwork, going down to second, a lot of coaches will teach the step through with the right foot and then throw. I disagree with that. If you watch the pro catchers, that's not what they're doing, okay? They're replacing the feet. They're staying in a line, they're gaining a little bit of ground, but mostly just replacing those feet and getting ready to throw the second. So, when they're here, they're gonna take this right foot and replace their left foot with it. The left foot's gonna clear first, and then the right foot's gonna catch up and, and replace that right there, okay? Now, you don't wanna get too high on the hop. You're losing time that way, okay? You're losing time with the step through, losing time if you're coming up too high, jumping, okay? It's almost like a quick feet shuffle. The back foot possibly may even drag a tiny bit, okay? That's how quick it's gotta be, low and quick, all right? For the hands, the arms, the transfer. A lot of coaches say go high with it, high transfer. I say don't go too low, okay? Because a high transfer, you can get jammed up sometimes if you're coming too high, okay? It's almost like you're jamming yourself up back there. What you don't want to do is not get too low, because if you get too low, you've got a longer arm circle, it takes more time to get the second. So what you want to do is just think, not be too low and be in a good position. Somewhere in here, chest, or just a little bit lower than the chest, I wouldn't go any lower than that. I wouldn't be by the belly, but chest, maybe a little bit lower, I think is, a, is comfortable for me. So add all those things in, and you've got a good throw down a second. The main thing you want to remember is staying quick. It's all about quickness. Quick feet, quick release, okay? The faster you can get the ball out of your hand and in the air, the faster it's going to get there, okay? Obviously, you want to make a good hard throw, be able to stay behind it. One other thing I want to talk about before we get done with this video is creating an angle. So kind of anticipate that pitch a little bit and create an angle with your body, gaining momentum forward, okay? And this goes back to the replacement of the feet. You want to replace that foot possibly gaining a little bit of ground going forward, okay? And this will give your body a good angle, be able to transfer force through your release point down to second. So it's gonna look a little something like this in full speed when I'm gaining my ground and getting my angle.
So here we go, I'm setting up, coming up. Hope you guys like this video. He's gonna tell us a few tips on how to have a faster pop time. Thank you, Young. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> Wait, right, you guys don't wanna see catching videos from me anymore? <laughs> Would you rather see me do catching videos or Will? <laughs> thank you, thank you, Young. Thank you. So, so a couple of things that, that we're gonna talk about, you know, uh, throwing the ball to second, it's gonna be important for you guys. Uh, to get it right, you know, uh, I've seen a lot of guys with, with unbelievable arms and, and with a bad mechanic and, and they, don't, they cannot throw anybody out. And I see vice versa. I see guys that they don't have a, that strong of an arm, but their mechanics are so good that they always, you know, get a good pop time to second base. They always throw that ball, you know, right there, give, give uh, your teammates a chance to, you know, to make the tag. So uh, most important thing, guys, is just, just you know, you wanna, you wanna be, you wanna be comfortable. We are men of first base, right? You, you wanna stagger. You wanna stagger your feet. You wanna stagger your feet a little bit. The way I did it, when I was nobody on base, nobody on base. If I trace a line, I will be right on top of that line, both feet. So I'm giving a nice target to my pitcher, right in the middle, square. Somebody on base. Somebody on base. I keep. Top of the line, this one, and this one, I cheat a little bit. I just cheat a little bit. I don't do it as much. If you see me, if you see me, I'm still giving my target in the middle, my body still straight, facing that way. I'm not sideways. I'm not like this. I've seen guys like that, you know, because they're running first, they're trying, they're trying to uh, be faster, you know, throwing the ball to second. But what happened? If I'm sideways, I'm not giving my pitcher a, a good target so he can hit, you know. Most important thing is you give a good target. Most important thing right now, guys, is the guy hitting. This is the guy we're trying to get out. We're not, we don't know if he's gonna steal the base. So the most important thing is I'm gonna give a good target to my pitcher so, so he can hit it. So now, I'm a little bit, I, I, I stagger my feet a little bit. I stagger my feet a little bit. Now I'm, I'm, I'm in a good angle. All right, guys, so a lot of you guys have been taught, uh, you know, put this hand behind that glove. So. I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't want you to do it because you can break a finger. Why is that? If I'm giving my target with my hand there, if the pitch is not right in the middle, you gotta go get it, guys. You're gonna go get the pitch. What's gonna happen with this hand? It's gonna stay right there. You, I'm pretty sure if you're not gonna be, if the pitch is that way, you're gonna go like this. This hand will not follow the glove, will not, right? Because if, why not? Because it feels uncomfortable. So if you're here, pitch down, fingers there, foul tip, you're done, all right? You're done. So the way, the, the way they taught me they, and, and, and that I learned, it was, first of all, as soon that I give my sign, guys, give my sign, I'm protecting that thumb. Nobody on, ba nobody on base, like you guys know, you put it back here. Somebody on base, I want you to put it right here, guys, right here. No, I don't have my elbow like this. I'm just resting my, my, my hand there, look. It is really hard if the, if, the, if the ball hit you there. Foul tip, you have this, you have the glove, you have your chest protector. If I have my chest protector, I will have more coverage for the arm. Now, when we cast, when we cast the ball, guys, when we cast the ball, when we're getting ready, we want that ball to travel. We don't want to go get it. Why? If you go get that ball, if you go get that ball, now your first step is going to be so long, you're going to be stepping at, at, at home play, you're gonna slide and it's gonna be long. That, that, that big step is gonna give that guy an extra couple uh, more steps to get to second, and that could be the difference of you throwing him out or, 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 or him be, being safe. So you want that ball to travel. Let it, 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 it's, I, I guarantee, guys, you're gonna be faster. Just let, it, let that ball travel uh, and, and just wait for it so now you can be short and you can be effective and you can be compact throwing to second base. Now, when the ball is coming, guys, and I catch it, three steps, three steps that I really want you to get this. Three steps to, uh, to throw the second. Catch it, most important thing, you're gonna catch it, get it out, full work. Catch it, get it out, full work. Some guys wanna catch it, do full work, and they get it out. You're not gonna have a good grip. Guys, 
catch it, get it out, footwork. That's how it works. A lot of times, a lot of times they catch it, footwork, now they get it out. My body's ready to throw. I don't have a good grip. I'm throwing it, I'm throwing it away. First move that I do, guys, first move that I do, I'm turning this, this knee a little bit in. I'm not moving my feet. I'm turning it in. Now this one goes to my base. This one's gonna go to my base. Where's my base? Right here. I'm not going back. I'm not going this way that I see a lot of guys doing that. A lot of guys are here. They go this way. So their momentum is going this way, this way to throw a, throw a second. So you're losing momentum. Now you, all your energy is coming this way when we're trying to throw the ball second. So you're not gonna throw the ball you know, hard and you're not using your body you know, to, to, to throw it faster to second base. So guys, when I, when I work on my mechanic, right, to throw the second, I like to work on a tee. This you can do here, you can do with a bat like I'm gonna do now, or you can do it in your garage. You can put a piece of tape, white tape, you can put it on the, on the, on, on the floor, on the ground, a tee. So you're gonna do it, we're gonna do a tee. Again, I'm doing it here, you can do it in your garage, so no excuses. You can do this at home. Uh, at home. So now look, I'm gonna work in a tee. I'm gonna be in top of this line. I'm gonna be in top of this line, right? Now, when, the, when I get the pitch and I turn, this foot goes, I'm gaining a little bit of momentum. Not a lot, not, not a lot. Just a little bit of momentum going forward and I'm staying, I'm staying on that tee. You see? So I told, my, I told the guys, get him up, get him down. My feet, get him up, get him down. So if you're too long, now you're gonna be too long. You're gonna either step on the plate or you're gonna go past. And that's why a lot of guys get in trouble. Now you're too long. You wanna be short, guys. Catchers, it is a tough throw. But if you make it simple and, 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 and you do it uh, con continuously, you know, the right way and the same way, you're gonna be good at it. It, it, is, it is tough because, it, you know, we don't have time to get that grip. So we want to do the mechanic right so we have a better chance. I told my kids, imagine that there's a rope right here and you want to stay under that. A lot of guys, a lot of guys, they catch it. The first thing they do is they come up. Now all they have is, is, is arm. They're not using the legs. Catchers, we're athletic. We're athletic. They used to be, back in the day, if you were fat, unathletic, you were tall, you know, you couldn't play any other position, Hey, go catch. No, now. Now you have guys that are uh, they're, they're really athletic back there. Okay, guys, so I want you to think when you catch the ball, I don't want you to go down. I don't want that glove to go down this way because what's going to happen? Now the exchange is going to happen down here. Your arm is going to be so long, right? You're going to be long. Your body's ready to throw. Now you're trying to catch up and you're just going to let, ball, you're gonna let the ball go anywhere. You can let it go here, just whatever. Same with pitching. Pitching, if the guy, they don't break the hands quick enough, they're trying to catch up. They, they, they're not gonna have a consistency release point. Catchers, that happens the same thing. If we're too long, we're not gonna have that release point consistently so we can throw it to second base. So what's gonna happen with a glove? What's gonna happen with a glove? Once we catch it, it doesn't matter where, where, I, where I catch it, my glove's gonna go it's gonna go st straight to this shoulder. Why? Obviously because my hand is there. I'm not gonna flip it. I really wanna get my, my glove to go all the way here. First of all, because I want the exchange to be there. Second of all, look how my shoulder now is closed. If I don't, if I don't do that, I can stay open easily. But if I'm here and I, and I go all the way here and, and I bring my, my, my glove to this shoulder, look that elbow, now I'm ready to throw the second. You know, I'm not open because I didn't do the exchange here. I'm close because I did it here. Now, now by the time I go like this, I'm getting a good grip. Now I go. Another thing that I want to tell you guys about, about throwing to second, it is second base is far. It is really far. And, and, and it can be hard to throw it there. So I have a big key that I can tell you to, to make your throw a little bit easier, a little bit better. The way I did it, I pick a closer point. So if the pitcher was throwing, I aim for his head. Why? Because I knew if I hit, I hit, I hit him on his head, my ball was gonna go all the way to second. Again, if you pick a, a, a closer target and you throw it through that target, it's gonna get there. Some of you guys who have a good arm can aim a little bit lower with the pitcher. 
weaker arm, you can, you can see the head, the head of the pitcher, couple feet higher, throw it through there. So pick an imaginary closer spot, closer target, that if, that if you know, if you can throw it through there, it's gonna get to second. Again, second is, 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 is a long way. It's a long way. If, if you pick a closer target, I, I guarantee you, you're gonna be more consistent and you're gonna be able to hit that second base better and, 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 and more times than not. Those are some great, great tips. Um, one question for you. What is the difference in the stance, if any, um, with runners on versus runners off? I know you talked about being staggered and sh uh, cheating a little bit, but what about like height? Because I see a lot of young guys when there's a runner on, they're like way up here um, versus when their regular stance is a lot lower. Is there any significance to that or how, how, do you, uh, how would you explain that? Well, you know what? No, nobody in base, you, you, you want to be comfortable. You know, you want to be comfortable. So, so if you have your butt down, you know, uh, that's good. Just be comfortable. Uh, what, what guys have to be careful with is, uh, and, and, and coaches are going to pick this, and, and, and smart runners are going to pick this really easy. There's a lot of catchers that when they call a breaking ball, they, their butt goes up. So as a, as a runner, once I see my, the catcher with his butt up, now I know it's a breaking ball, so I'm taking off. Even if I didn't see the sign, I see the, the, the catcher, I see the catcher a little bit higher, so now in my mind, I'm like, okay, this is a breaking ball. If I'm at second base and I see that, I can give a sign to the, to the, to the hitter, hey, breaking ball. So, so it happens. So as a catcher, I, I, I want to I wanna, I wanna be paying attention to that. Like nobody in base again, nobody in, ba nobody in base, you want to be comfortable, up, but perfect. You call a breaking ball. As a catcher, I'm expecting that it's going to bounce 100% all the time. I, I always gonna expect, every time, every time I call a breaking ball, it's gonna bounce. I never expect that it was gonna be a strike. So I was ready to block it. I, I, you know, I, I wasn't gonna pick it, I was ready, 100%. That 1% when I say I need it for a strike and he bounced it, I didn't block it and he went through and I looked horrible. So, so nobody on base, again, you, you, you can be comfortable right here, you can be lined up, you know, your feet, you know, are the same and nice target. Nice target. Even breaking ball. With breaking ball, now you can go up, pop, and block it. Now, when I talk about being up with your butt, it's man on base. Do it with the fastball. Do it with the breaking ball. You call a fastball, you, wanna, you want your butt, look, you're here, nobody on base, right here. Somebody on base, just a little bit high. Just a little bit high. You're right. I've seen guys like this. Now, what happened? I'm giving my, I'm giving my pitcher a higher target. Pitcher is gonna aim for that. We're gonna get hurt. Now they're gonna be throwing breaking balls up, fastball up. No, no. I want to give a low target. Still low target. My butt is a little bit. It's a little bit higher, but not as much. Right there, I can I can go flop and do my mechanic. So it is it is it is just a little bit, John. Just a little bit of that change of nobody on base. That butt is down. Somebody on base. I'm a little bit higher. That's awesome, Will. I, you know, the, the footwork and the, the hands, you know, I think plays a crucial part because, you know, a lot of guys want to work on uh, increasing their arm speed and getting their arms stronger to throw. And that's important. That can help a little bit. But the ball is always going to be moving faster out of your hand. So the quicker you can get it out of your hand, the, the quicker your pop time is going to be. But that does play a role in, uh, you know, how quick your pop time is. So what are some things that you do to work on getting a faster arm and being able to throw the ball faster to second base? Uh, you, you know what, like, like you say, beside mechanics, right? Beside, beside fixing my mechanic and, 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 and just being sure and giving myself a chance to, to just, just be consistent. You know, I, I, I did a lot of, I did a lot of arm, arm work, you know, the arm, arm bands. I did a lot of those and, and I play long toss. I play long toss. I, I did it every other day. Uh, that seems like getting my arm strong. When it, whenever, whenever I didn't play long toss, second base for, for me felt like it was a center field. It was, it was that difference. That when I played long toss and I threw almost every day, I felt like second base like, was like right there where the pitcher is. So for me, throwing long, long toss, long toss, long toss, and working on my throwing to the bases because it's not the same playing long toss than, like, than literally throwing to the bases. Do it twice, three times a week. 
you know, throw to the bases, throw to the bases. I tell, I tell kids, and, 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 I, and, I, and I tell young people, you know what, when, when you're catching in the game, first of all, you're doing, you did all your job, you know, uh, practice and, and your free time at home, hopefully you work extra. But I tell kids, the only chance that you have to make a good throw to seconds is in between innings. And I see a lot of kids, you know, they, they, they cast the ball and they go, they go through the motion and hey, that, that's your only practice shot to throw the ball to throw the ball to second. So so take advantage of that. Really get get down there, get down there and and, and get that, that last speed whoop, and work on, on, on your on your gain speed and making a nice throw there. So if in that inning you have an opportunity to throw the guy out, you already practice it and you already know how it feels, how you feel that day. Because not every day you're gonna feel the same. So but I think you're just creating a good, a good habit of, of playing long toss and, and, and throwing to the bases at least twice a week. That's going to be huge because it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to make you feel that second base way closer than if you don't do those, uh, those extra work. That's awesome, Will. Some really great, great tips. And the biggest thing I want you guys to take away from this is not just coming here and watching the videos and listen what this uh, MLB veteran has for you, but the reason why he got there and he did so well, uh, w one of the biggest reasons is because of the hard work. So when he says go out there and throw to the bases two to three times a week and get the long toss in, you know, you just coming here and watching the video and then sitting on your butt all week is not going to help you get any better. It's not going to increase your pop time, uh, get you any faster with your pop time. You got to be out there working. You got to be putting in the work. And that's why I like to have guys like Will on here to share his experience with you guys. But if you don't do anything with it, it's not valuable, okay? So you have to put in the work and make it happen, okay? So we are here again with Major League catcher Ryan LaVarnway, 2013 World Series champion, I might add, by the way. And so in this video, we really want to talk about throwing. Throwing's important, throwing's important for throwing runners out. Give us some tips, what do you got? Guys, one thing you want to talk about with throwing is that your your feet are the more more important than your arm, all right? You got to be able to get your feet down fast and you got to be able to keep them in line, all right? The reason that's important is because you've never ever seen a guy throw the ball with one foot on the ground, all right? So the fast faster your feet can get down, the faster the ball can come out. One more thing that's important is direction, all right? You can have the best arm in the world, but if you throw it into center field, it's going to be safe. It's probably going to advance to third. So the best way to make a strong, accurate throw is to keep good direction. And when we when we practice, we want to be as perfect as we can in practice so that in the game, when it's a non-perfect situation, maybe you have a bad throw to throw on, you're relying on your instincts, the thing you've done a thousand times in practice. Be more perfect in practice so that when you have to go and react to a pitch that's a little bit bad, you're still going to be pretty darn close to perfect. All right? I want to demonstrate the T drill for you guys today. This is a tried and true drill. You guys might have heard it before, but this is something that's great for guys that are five years old, just starting to catch, and this is something we do at Big League Spring Training, all right? I cannot emphasize enough the importance of this drill. So guys, when we talk about the footwork, you have to worry about how to transition the ball on the glove side. You have to worry about how to get the ball on the back side, you know, the jab step. What happens if it's a pitch that drags you over here? Anticipation. There's a lot to talk about, but what we're going to talk about in this drill is just the T drill. We're going to talk about in the most perfect situation, you know, that ball that's generally down the middle. How do we get our feet in the perfect position to get it to second base as quickly as possible? All right. What you want to do is you want to create a little T. We've created it here with tape on the ground. You can do it with your foot, just dragging it in the dirt. The most important thing is that you have something straight towards second base to give you good direction, and you have a starting point, all right? The reason that you have this starting point, that's the head, the top of the tee, is that you want to make sure you're not traveling too far forward, all right? From where you start, the bigger the steps you take, every step you take, imagine that runner that's stealing second base taking two or even three steps, all right? So you want to get your feet down quick. You also want to make sure you don't travel backwards, all right? That distance to second base is already plenty far enough. You don't want to give yourself, have to change your momentum. You don't want to make that throw any farther, all right? So the reason we have this line here, start with your toes on it. Make sure you travel forward in front of it, but not too far forward, all right? If I had to give a distance, maybe six inches, it's not exact. The idea is you just want to get that foot down as quick as possible in a forward direction, all right? So you start with this center line that's giving you the direction straight towards second base in the middle of your body. Straddle it right down the middle, 
toes on this back line. Start with no ball, all right? You don't need a ball to work on your footwork. Get into your athletic stance, boom, towards second base. The reason you have the T, check your feet, all right? How is your direction? On this rep, my toes are both on that line. My direction is perfect towards second base. I'm looking down the barrel of the gun, the direction, and I'm going to make a strong, accurate throw on this one, all right? What you want to avoid, guys, is drifting too far over to the side, getting too far away from that middle line, and you want to avoid, when you come up to throw, not closing your feet off. Those are common mistakes that can be done with this drill, and that this drill is going to give you immediate feedback, whether you have a partner, a teammate, a coach, whether you're doing this by yourself, you're going to be able to look down and tell by your feet, I didn't close my feet off enough. If you do this, what's going to happen is you're going to throw the ball open, and you're most likely going to miss it towards the second base side and high, all right? So again, you're going to start with your feet on the line, getting athletic stance, transfer the ball, toes right on that line, closed off towards second base. The next thing you can do, start with the ball in your glove, all right? I like to talk about progressions. How do we start at the very basic level and then build from there? Build one thing in at a time so that we start with a strong foundation. Guys, footwork is one of the pillars of catching. It's one of the three most important things you can do. If you want to check out the other two, there's a three pillar power up video right below. Click the link. But what you want to do with this is you start with the ball in your glove. Work on transferring that ball now, all right? You're still going to stay focused on the T drill. Short step with the foot, toes both on the line. Now I've transferred the ball into my throwing hand. I've gotten four seam grip and I'm ready to throw that ball to second base, all right? So again, you want to make sure that that ball's in the glove. You don't get lazy with the feet. Don't open them up. All right, guys, the next progression is to have a coach or a, a teammate, your mom or dad, brother, sister, the neighbor, whoever you can, have them flip you the ball. Again, start with your toes on the line. We're still talking T drill here. They flip you that ball. Boom. Now you work on your transition. All right. So there's three ways to do this drill. You can build it up. Each time it's going to get a little bit more complex, but this is one of the pillars of catching. One of the most important drills you can do to work on getting your feet down quick and with good direction. Guys, another common mistake that you could do with this drill, especially as a younger player, is be taking too many steps. All right. I don't want to see left, right, left, or especially really don't want to see, you know, you're, you're not dancing with this ball. All right. We talk about getting your feet down quick. That means that you get a jab step with your right and then that stride step to throw with your left. It's a catch, a right, and a left rhythm. The reason that a lot of younger players end up taking that extra step is because your body is giving you feedback. Your body's telling you, I'm not ready to throw. So you're trying to get a little bit of extra momentum to help your arm out because your body knows you're not doing it on purpose. I understand. But what's important to understand is how do I avoid that? All right. Now think about getting shot out of a cannon. You want to create a little bit of momentum towards second base. If I'm back on my heels, I'm going to turn to the side here. If I'm back on my heels, I'm not ready to throw. I'm about to fall backwards. I'm straight up and down. I'm not going to be able to generate any sort of power towards second base this way. So what's going to end up happening is I'm going to take that extra step and I'm going to go. As opposed to that, what we want to do is we want to be up on our toes. We want to be athletic and ready to go. See how my chest is now leaning forward a little bit? I don't want to be flat. Don't misunderstand me. Some is good. More is not better here, guys. You want to have a little bit of momentum, weight on your toes so that when you're ready to go, you have a little bit of drive angle to drive out and get that right left step going. So again, T drill, little momentum, feet on the line, get that forward momentum with that jab step. All right, so Ryan, I know that pop time is important. You know, watching major league catchers, they all got good arms. But some catchers don't have the strongest arms. Um, what is, is this a good drill for someone to improve, even if they don't have the best arm, you know, getting balls to second base? Yeah, so if you give yourself the best possible uh, body position to throw the ball, your arm is going to play up as strong as it can. All right. If you're stepping back, if you're doing one of these jump things where you're losing ground, you're not getting momentum, your arm's going to be even weaker because you're not using your legs. If you get that jab step, that momentum towards second base, your arm is going to be as strong as you can possibly have it. But more than that, the quicker you can get your feet down, the quicker you can get it out of your hand. Guys, the best throwers are not the guys with the best arms. The best throwers are the guys with the best feet. Get your feet down, get the ball out of your hand as quick as possible. Every time, every split second that your feet are not on the ground and the ball is not out, that runner is getting closer and closer to second base. That clock on your pop time keeps running. 
it, it, your pop time is not nearly as quick if your release is slow. I mean, it makes sense, but I can't emphasize this enough. Your feet are the most important part of having a quick pop time to second and throwing out those guys. So basically, feet, quickness, and accuracy are the most important things when throwing down second base. Absolutely, and arm strength is the last thing to add to it, but feet, quickness, and accuracy are the three most important parts of throwing, which is one of the most three important pillars of catching. That's great stuff. Thank you, Ryan. going on we got the uh, new pro series team defender in this is the pro series one this is the original team defender uh, I just wanted to show you a couple of the differences in the uh, pro series team defender here um, the biggest difference on this one obviously is going to be your uh, color this one's going to have the black and the green in this one comes in your standard white I like both of them the way they both look <clears throat> both look pretty cool um, but the other big difference is the thumb piece this is made out of a um, I don't want to say a soft material because it's not soft but a softer material than this one this one's very rigid and this one's uh, rigid enough to get the you know gets the job done that's what the glove is about but it's not as hard as this one so I actually prefer the hardness of this one but a lot of my catchers uh, like this one comfort wise and it still does the, a great job protection wise so um, so that's the biggest difference on this it also goes up further on the thumb higher on the thumb and so does the uh, neoprene sleeve I don't have that with me right now but the little sleeve that you can use to put on your finger also is a little bit bigger so um, that's the big difference there another difference is this one comes in a small size as of right now um, and this one only comes in a medium large and extra large this one goes from small to extra large um, and then you've got the double stitching um, by the fingers here you see right right there on the fingers so what you can do is if you wanted to you can cut off the above the double stitching right on the fingers and have your fingers come out of the glove so someone who has a smaller hand than even a small glove or or if you just decide to um, you can cut the fingers off that way you know you don't have to worry about the ends of uh, ends of the glove if that's what you want to do or if it's for a fitting reason you could do that also the padding has 20 percent the padding on the the palm and the fingers here has 20 percent more padding than the standard team defender so there you go there's your pro series team defender um, you can go ahead and get it on my website yougoprobaseball.com i'll leave the link below and uh go go and get one all right guys